today's lecture, we will discuss about Elastic Beanstalk, an automation service provided by AWS for web applications or worker applications. We will first take a look at what it is, how it works, and then we will have a quick demo session how you can automate your application deployments using Elastic Beanstalk. All right, let's get started. So what is Elastic Beanstalk? Elastic Beanstalk is an easy to use service for deploying and scaling web applications. You can quickly deploy and manage applications in AWS Cloud without worrying about the infrastructure that runs those applications. It reduces management complexity without restricting your choice or control on the application. You simply need to upload your application and Elastic Beanstalk automatically handles the details of capacity provisioning, load balancing, scaling, and application health monitoring. Elastic Beanstalk supports applications developed in different programming languages such as Go, Java, .NET, Node.js, PHP, Python, and Ruby, as well as different platform configurations for each language, such as for Java, Java 8, and Java 7, etc., on familiar servers such as Apache or Apache Tomcat or Nginx or Passenger, IS, etc. Elastic Beanstalk provides a default configuration with services from AWS FreeTire, but you can also define your own configuration, which we call it as custom configuration for infrastructure and software stack to be used for the given environment. The software stack that runs on your Amazon EC2 instances depends on the configuration which you define. You can also perform most deployment tasks such as changing the size of the fleet uh, of EC2 instances or monitoring your application or directly from uh, the Elastic Beanstalk web interface. All right. Let's take a look at how it works. As a developer, you can develop your applications as per Beanstalk supported programming languages, which we have seen in the previous slide. And then you can package your code as zip file or war file for Java. In AWS Beanstalk console or CLI, you can simply upload your application package along with the default configuration, or you can define your own configuration for the application stack. And uh, once you submit, AWS Beanstalk will auto provision all your required AWS resources, such as EC2 with auto scaling, Elastic Load Balancer, or RDS, etc., within minutes. It also provides a DNS name for your web application so that users can connect to your application and uh, start accessing the application within minutes. You can also monitor your environment using CloudWatch metrics within AWS Elastic Beanstalk console itself, and you can set up alarms to get notified when a specific value exceeds a threshold value. After your environment is launched, you can then manage your environment and deploy new versions uh, whenever your application has been announced. And this can go on as a cycle and uh, you can keep deploying your new versions quickly and easily. So using Elastic Beanstalk, you can launch your application and get it running within minutes without worrying about the infrastructure that runs those applications. All right, let's go into AWS console and take a look at deploying a sample web application. Okay, I am on AWS console. Let's search for Elastic Beanstalk in here. Let's click on it. And uh, this is what you see if you visit Elastic Beanstalk for the first time. The service is region specific. Whatever infrastructure it enables, they will be specific uh, to the region. Right now I have chosen US East one, which is North Virginia, as you can see here. So we first need to create an application and then we create different environments within the application. So let's create an application in here. Let's give it a name and uh, click on create. Within the application, you can create new environment uh, with the default or custom configuration, which defines your specific stack for your application. You can create an environment from actions, or uh, since no environment available yet, uh, you can see a message here and you can click here to uh, create an environment as well. All right, let's click in here. Okay, 
you can see we can create two types of environments on Beanstalk. One is a web server environment to serve your web application needs, which communicates over HTTP protocol on port 80 or 443 if you have enabled SSL. Another one is a worker environment. If your application performs operations or workflows that take a longer time to complete, you can offload those tasks to a dedicated worker environment. Decoupling your web application front end uh, from a process that performs blocking operations is a common way to ensure that your application stays responsive under load. So let's select a web server environment for the demo. And uh, you can specify the subdomain in here. Your environment uh, is available to users at a subdomain of elasticbeanstalk.com. If you don't want to use this domain name and uh, if you own a domain name, you can use Route 53 to resolve it to your environment. Or if you do not own a DNS name, you can purchase one from Route 53. On how to set up a CNAME or alias on Route 53, please visit our courses under networking section. All right, let's go ahead with the elasticbeanstock.com domain name for the demo. Let's see if uh, this is available. All right, it is available. Then you can choose a platform from here, it's a Python or Java or PHP or Node.js, etc. So let's choose Node.js for the demo. You can also choose a custom platform. A custom platform lets you develop an entire new platform from scratch. Customizing the operating system, additional software, and uh, scripts that Elastic Beanstalk runs on platform instances. This flexibility allows you to build a platform for an application that uses a language or other infrastructure software for which Elastic Beanstalk doesn't provide a platform out of the box, which you can see in our previous platform section. We won't be doing uh, this creation of custom platform right now in the demo. So let's move on and uh, you can choose your application code from here. You can upload your code as zip or war file. You can either upload the package directly from your computer or put it in an S3 bucket and uh, serve it up from there. For the demo, let's choose the sample application which is provided by AWS. And from here, you can either click on create environment which creates uh, with a default configuration or you can click on configure more options to customize your configuration. Let's click on configure more options and uh, see what we can modify. All right, you can choose presets from here so that a specific configuration is set by default and then you can modify. Uh, default preset is low cost, which prefers free tire resources. And then uh, you can have high availability, which prefers high available components such as load balancers, etc. And you can review and modify uh, different sections of configurations from here. If you want to customize, uh, let's say the software configuration, you can click on modify in here and uh, you can modify parameters such as uh, proxy server or Node.js version, or uh, you can give a startup command, etc. And then if you want to change the instance type or instance configuration, you can click on uh, modify in here and then you can choose a different instance type or you can add uh, more size to the EVS volumes or uh, you can select a specific security group to control the access to your instance. Similarly, you can modify other configurations such as load balancer, security, monitoring, notifications, etc. And under networking section, if you click on modify, you can also provide a VPC in which you would like the application to run. And then uh, you can choose if the instances require a public IP and uh, you can also choose the subnets in which you would like the application to run. If you don't choose any VPC, the application runs on a default VPC. And from here, you can also create an RDS instance. If you click on modify, um, you can either create from a snapshot or create a new RDS instance and uh, you can choose the database settings in here. And you can also add tags to your environment from here. All right, let's choose low cost for the demo and uh, let's go ahead and uh, hit create environment. Okay, it will take few minutes to launch the environment and you can monitor the event progress in here. 
All right, let's come back after the environment is ready. Okay, the environment is now ready and up and running. You can see the events on the dashboard here. And here is a domain name. And if you access this domain name in another tab in the browser, there you go. You can see the sample application is running successfully. All right, now let's take a look at how to manage the application. On the left, you can see different sections. So let's go through each one of them. First, let's take a look at configuration. This is similar to what we have seen when creating the environment. You can change certain configurations, but a few of them cannot be changed depending on uh, your previous configurations. Example, you cannot change the load balancing config uh, here because we chose low cost, which does not contain load balancers. So the next section is logs. So the Amazon EC2 instances in your Elastic Beanstalk environment generates logs that you can view to troubleshoot issues uh, with your application or configuration files. So logs created by the web server or application server or Elastic Beanstalk platform scripts and AWS cloud formation are stored locally on individual instances. And uh, you can watch these logs in here. And the next one is health. So under health, you can watch the resource health and its usage, and you can perform certain actions such as reboot or terminate instances from here. And under monitoring section, you can see your instance and load balancer metrics from CloudWatch, and you can create alarms for uh, specific metrics uh, by clicking on this bell icon in here. So if you click on this one, and uh, you can give it a name, and let's choose the threshold, uh, let's say CPU utilization is greater than or equal to, let's say 75%, and then uh, notify a new SNS topic. Let's give an email address which gets subscribed to this topic and it gets notified when the state changes to alarm. And then let's click on add. Since there is a change to the configuration, Beanstalk updates the environment and it might take few minutes so let's come back after the update is complete. Okay, the update has been complete. And if we go to the alarms, you can see a new alarm has been added. Okay, so the next one is managed updates. So Elastic Beanstalk regularly uh, releases platform updates. Let's say if your platform is Java, it can update to the latest Java version to provide fixes, software updates, and new features. With managed platform updates, uh, you can configure your environment to automatically upgrade to the latest version of the platform during a scheduled maintenance window. And your application remains in service during the update process with no reduction in capacity. In certain use cases, auto updating may not be a desired state since the code might become stale uh, due to certain changes to the features. So the setting is disabled by default and you can enable it from uh, the configuration section if you need it. And next under events, you can watch all the events happening on the environment and uh, you can manage tags from here. There are certain actions you can perform on uh, the environment. An important one is the save configuration. Uh, you can save this environment configuration and uh, use this to quickly launch more environments in future. Click on save configuration. Let's give it a name and uh, click on save. And uh, you can see it gets listed under saved environments. And you can then select from here and uh, you can launch new environments. And under application versions in here, you can add your new applications or its versions. And then you can choose it when uh, launching the environment or you can uh, deploy to the existing environment from here. If you want to update the version of your application, let's go back to the environment and then uh, click on upload and deploy in here. And then you can choose the package. I've downloaded uh, the Node.js uh, version one package and just renamed it to version two and uh, give the version info and you can click on deploy. It might take a couple of minutes to uh, update the version. Okay, the new version has been deployed. And uh, you can see the new version of the application uh, under application version. So if you go back to the application versions and uh, there it is. If you want to revert back to the older version, you can select uh, the older version and uh, click on deploy in here. And then select the environment 
and uh, click on deploy and it is getting deployed and if you go back to the environment you can see the application is reverted to the older version so when you create an application stack on elastic beanstalk although you can manage your entire environment uh, from uh, the beanstalk console you can still view and monitor them from uh, specific consoles for example let's go to ec2 and under instances you can see the ec2 instances listed in here for the beanstalk and uh, same with load balancers you can see under load balancer section right now we don't see anything because our configuration uh, didn't have any load balancers but if you do have they will be listed under load balancers similarly if you go to the elastic ips you can see an elastic ip associated with your ec2 instance and if you want to delete the entire stack there is no need to delete the resources individually you can go back to the elastic beanstalk and then to the environment and under actions click on terminate environment confirm the termination and then click on terminate it might take few minutes uh, to terminate the environment so let's come back after termination is complete all right the termination is complete now let's see the resources under ec2 if they are really terminated so if you go to the instances you can see the instance is terminated and if you go to the elastic ips you can see the ip has also been deleted all right so that is it about elastic beanstalk as we have witnessed you can launch an entire stack of application within few minutes or maybe few hours if you have multiple environments and effectively manage them under one roof without worrying about scaling requirements hope you have enjoyed this lecture